Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. It is Tim Dillon. We are here from our new studio, which is a work in fucking progress. Keep your mouth shut. Keep your criticisms down. You, you, there's no such thing as constructive criticism from any of you. So shut up. If Roger Deakins wants to chime in, he can. Who the hell's that? He's one of the most famous cinematographers in the world. Shut up. You haven't been introduced. They know me. Ray's been in L.A. three days walking around telling everybody how Hollywood works. <laughs> okay? We're here in the new studio from an undisclosed location so none of you fucking people get cute and fucking show up. Uh, and we're very excited uh, to be doing video because I know it's very important for the people on YouTube who get this show absolutely for free, who pay nothing. They demand video, and then they're gonna—they're not gonna like. They're gonna go, yeah, the background. I don't really like the background. I, mean, I want the Listen, it's all gonna—it's all coming together. It's all coming together, folks. Okay, as Ray said once, during what, the best bomb I've ever seen was Ray. In a winery in Cape May, New Jersey. Do you West remember Cape that? West Cape May is right, yeah. West Cape May, New Jersey. Thank you for clarifying. West Cape May, New Jersey, a fan of this show, yeah, had booked us. Inexplicably. Yeah, booked me. Just, Inexplicably, yeah. he, he wanted us to come down to do a show. We thought potentially there'd be fans of the podcast right. in Cape May, New Jersey. Not only was that not the case, the, the room was like older wine people. Trashy though, trashy, but not not our all, kind of trashy. Not our fans, right? Nobody that would enjoy this. They're like Billy Joel fans, more right, right. Billy Joel fans, right? But but like turn on him because he hasn't supported Trump yeah. enough. Those are the types of people, you Correct. know. Write a song about Trump, pussy. <laughs> Remake Piano Man about Trump, you pussy. Like, they like the idea of Bruce Springsteen what? until he writes a song about a cop getting shot. Yeah. I mean, a, a, a cop shooting a black guy. They don't like that. They listen to, you know, uh, Born in the USA and think it's like the, the biggest pro-America song in the world. Yeah. They don't like 41 shots. Yeah. So let me tell you right now, I saw Bruce Springsteen, amazing, one of the best concerts at, at the uh, Madison Square Garden E Street Band 1999 with my friends Aunt Deb. Aunt Deb took us. And he did that song, 41 Shots, about Amadou Diallo. Oh, God. Boy, did that cool the room. <laughs> Boy, did that cool the room. Everybody was really into it. And then he was like, 41 Shots. And you could tell people were just walking, milling around, going to get, you're going to have a cigarette. They're like, he was just reaching for his wallet. Yeah. And it's like, you know, the people like, there was no chorus for them to sing, yeah. you know? So they were just like, he had it coming. <laughs> What um, were they supposed to do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Split second decisions <laughs> aren't easy. <laughs> so those are the types of people in Cape May, New Jersey. And then we fucking go out, just, right. you know, and you went up and you had an epic bomb. You started out talking about. I, had a nice ri I riffed something and it went well. Well, no, you, you're right. You yeah. had one great riff. It was right. a sentence and it really went well. <laughs> I, do you remember what it was? I don't. It, I don't. It's something about me being a fat, perhaps. I don't know. Whatever it was, it was instantly pleasing to them. Yeah. They were like, indeed. Right. And they laughed. And then you made a joke about heroin. Yeah, I've been doing this bit about, you know, it, it's not a heavy thing. It's just I about, love the bit. It's just about how heroin addicts, like, you know, at least they can make new friends in their 30s. And I like, love that bit. It's a good bit. Thank you. Now, the people in Cape May, I guess their kids are just dropping like flies because right. of this stuff. Now, it's a bit of an epidemic. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> I do heroin jokes now, but now it's gone the other way where even the parents of the kids who died don't care anymore. Like, They're, like, yeah. much. <laughs> They're like, getting ah, ah, ah. Um, So Ray did that, and they, they, they turned on him. They started yelling like, move on, move on. Right, they were like, move on, move on. <laughs> and then you dug deeper and deeper, and then you got to a point where you go, listen to me. You can't just say you brought up heroin. You're fat. We hate you. You went, you looked at them, and you went, it's all coming together, folks. <laughs> it's all coming together. And then one of the greatest things ever, you started going into this bit about feminism. Oh, right. Yeah. And Ray is a progressive guy. He doesn't appear progressive. He right. doesn't sound progressive. And many progressive people wish you would just not say anything <laughs> yeah. progressive. Yeah, well, man, the you team. would just go away. Yeah. You know, you think you think they're mad at Rogan's endorsement. Yeah. What about, you know? So he's like, I endorse Marianne Williamson. <laughs> Um, but Ray goes, <laughs> I'd love if you married Marianne Williamson, 
But so Ray then, he does this bit about feminism where the basic gist of the bit is you go, you can't just say, hey, like, rights don't work. Explain the bit, but it's like, you- Oh, you- yeah, it's the one, so basically I, I was a friend from Long Island who was talking about, um, what was the premise? It, it, it was basically like, but basically, hey, like, we, you know, we gave you the right to vote. Um, right. And you're like, that's, that's not, not how the rights way. work. Yeah, yeah, that's not how rights work. You yeah. can't turn around. And one of my favorite lines in the bit, which is just an aggressive line, yeah. is you go, we, we, we stopped fisting you on the subway. Yeah. And so they just, a group, an older crowd of wine drunks just hear him. They're not listening anymore to every word and every nuance, right. if they ever were. So they just hear you talking about fisting on the subway. Right. And then I've never heard this in any comedy show I've done, and it's hilarious. A loud chorus of booze filled with this. Literally, they went, get off, get off, get off, get off. Get off, get off, get off. Like, get off, get it, off, it get off. frenzy, get off. <laughs> and he then sat down. He, he he finished up and sat down. But it was an epic bomb in the way that it was so much more entertaining than most people's specials right. now. <laughs> That's the problem with comedy is it's one of the least entertaining things you could put your, you put, you could focus your eyes on. Right. Literally anything is funnier. Literally anything. People are like, I have a new special. No one cares. I mean, good. <laughs> good for you. We're proud of you. But no, I mean, it's just not. I mean, no one's even putting themselves out there. It's, it's so much of just like, it's the kind of stuff you, it's such milk toast, middle of the road. Yeah. Like, what are we doing here? Like, right. I'm not, and look, Chappelle, I love it. Yeah. But it's it, it, there's a certain level of like, I know I'm going to be doing the controversial thing right now. Yeah. I mean, look, it's cliche. We talk about it so much. I, I, I'm a Carlin guy. I go back yeah. as a kid. And it was just like, he had a point. He, he was making a point. He, he was, wasn't holding him back. But there was, there was a construction of the, of the, the joke that was, you know, intricate and it was funny but you know he but he was he, he was also like conveying he's not chomsky but he wasn't you well, know Chappelle's doing that too no Chappelle is yeah, yeah. But it, it just feels a little more like I, I i never felt like carlin was trying to be like but he also wasn't dealing with this woke culture shit well whatever it is it's just like nobody it's rare that we need an hour from anyone unless they are Chappelle. right unless you're a legend it's like tough to need out so it's like when i watch that bomb and i put on instagram and people are like they're invested in it because they're watching something happen that, that what's interesting about it is like you don't know which way is this gonna go yeah what how, what's happening right and with a comedy special you know it's relatively good because that's why it people, somebody put it out right right it's it, I mean, it, part of the problem is it like so many comedy fans? It's not their fault. We you know we love them, but like they want a lot of the time, I mean, like the edgier stuff or whatever. Like you're dealing with that was raw because you're dealing with people who are like, why am I even watching this? Right? What, what am I watching? Like, who right. is this ma- maniac? Like that that level of just kind of well, it's yeah. I mean, we took Ray, so Ray's in LA. He's here. He's visiting. We go down to to Nobu in Malibu, which is a sushi, obviously a hot spot. In Malibu, right on the water, beautiful. We don't have reservations. Right. We go in. We're like, do you have anything for two? They go, yeah, the sushi bar. Like face, face the wall. Right. You two face the wall. Logics, the rappers walking out of there. I would not even know who he is until right. You I mean, he, him. number one, he's white, and I know yeah. that he says the n word a lot because he has a black parent. God bless him. But it's you're white, so whatever. But I get it. And he walks out like you know. And I'm like, ah, good for him. And then he wasn't saying the N-word in Nobu. I'm just saying I, I've noticed that, that, you know, he has that <laughs> no, license. That was you. <laughs> and I don't know, right, that was me. That was me. Um, and we go in there and 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 Ray, first of all, it's no longer sunset. It's dark. You can't see anything. Nobu's like infested with celebrities and other people that don't want to be like filmed. Ray does the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. He swivels around in the chair at the sushi bar, which, by the way, they put us at the sushi bar <laughs> to face the wall so that nobody would have to see us eating, <laughs> slurping fish. Because you know what sushi is. You slurp it with your fingers. You're like... And nobody, nobody needs to see Ray or myself playing with soy sauce, you know. <laughs> so they go face the wall. He turns around with his phone... And starts filming the restaurant. <laughs> it's not true. It's absolutely true. <laughs> you know that's why you're laughing. It's, it's a fucking horror show. First of all, we're we're conspicuous in there already. I'm like right. low profile. Keep it low. 
keep it low. He turns around with his phone and he's like, rah, 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 and I go, what the fuck are you doing? I say, you can't do this. This is crazy. He goes, I'm trying to get a view. I'm trying to get a view. <laughs> uh, there is no <laughs> view. No it's dark. I mean, tell, when, when, tell everyone what happened look, then if I'm first wrong. First of all, as a preface, you've taken me to very nice restaurants. I've never you know, taken you've a picture. You've never done this yeah, before. I, I've, I've met you've, some famous you've people. You've lost your mind. No, I've met some I'm, I'm, I don't go out of my way to introduce myself to people. You had a moment of temporary insanity with this. I, I was only thinking about my girlfriend Lucy. Okay, that's sweet. But and she was like, she was like, where are you? Did she ask Nobu? you to film a no, restaurant no, for but, her? But I was like, I forgot there was even celebrities there. I don't I don't even know who Logic is. I understand that. I'm but just saying, like, they're just regular people. I very if you, really It would have been wrong in a sizzler. <laughs> which we were in earlier next to the fat store. If you took out a phone in a sizzler and did that, it would be also wrong and probably criminal. I was just showing her this is a nice architecture. I understand that. It's you, a nice looking like place. I was just going to show a her. Man, she's stuck at home a, in our apartment. A man such as yourself should not be <laughs> filming people in a restaurant. It was, very quick. It was, a, it was a picture. It wasn't, I wasn't filming. This yeah. is not a documentary. I wasn't trying to get like some, I wasn't trying to do some kind of pedophilia documentary in Nobu. Yeah. I'm just fucking trying to like, you know, get like, show her, hey, look at the, the, the wood's very nice here. I understand what you were trying to do, but it was a moment of temporary insanity. Sure. You were, you were completely insane. I forgot about, I, how exclusive can this place be if we, me and you could just walk in? Because we've talked about it before. Nice restaurants are the only thing that can't legally keep us out. Right. That's why food is our only luxury. <laughs> we've discussed this before. People say, why do you like nice restaurants? Well, then you let me in your country club then. <laughs> and I won't be as fat. I can't go anywhere else. I can't get on someone's jet. I can't just waltz into Bel Air and walk through the gates and enjoy myself. Right. The only thing that so far, legally, they cannot stop me and you from doing is going to a nice restaurant. It is the only luxury for the poor. And I get beaten up on fatty. I'm not fat positive, fat activist. I get it. It's bad for you. It causes diabetes. I know everybody's trying to be better out there. Maybe some people aren't, but whatever. None of us are happy being fat. That's the other thing. How many people are actually happy being fat? Not a lot. Uh, yeah, no. Look, some, yeah. some people are content to be slobs. Sure. But like this whole idea that there's a lot of people being like, I'm fat and deal with it. It's just not happening. No, it's gross. I mean, look, millionaires are doing it, but not people on a bus. Nobody on a public bus is thrilled to be a fat ass. Yeah, no one wants it. Nobody want, Nobody who's poor and fat is like, look at this, bitch. It's called confidence. No, no one's doing that in a Walmart. What it right. is is millionaires who are like just going to put it out there and make money doing keep, it. Well, it's really, also keep eating our poison. Right. You know, it's like, hey, you going to put down that macaroni and cheese, fatty? Yeah. Swallow it. Yeah. It's just that, like, that. that there's an interest in... They, what, they they want you eating salad like who who what, do, the do, the Dole Corporation is not the biggest consortium. In this I have country. whole bits about it. We were raised a lot of our generation, and it doesn't this doesn't justify eating this shit now, and it doesn't justify not changing your life. But our and I've said it before, and I say it on stage. Our our boomer parents f fed us poison. We were. The fast food generation. Right. In a way that kids growing up today are not. I mean, yeah. we were, we were, people had birthday parties in fast food places. Our, our formative years were well before uh, even Super Size Me, which was a, right. big, was a big turning point where they started to at least show they shame. They tried. No, but there was the, there was a level of shame. We're like we're gonna we're gonna make salads right. more prominent, and we're gonna try to like. I was on that guy's podcast, Spurlock, and then yeah. he me to himself, and no one cared. Oh, right. Remember that? Yeah. He went out there, and he's like, "I've acted inappropriate." It's like what? But I do feel like, as much as they didn't do anything too fast food, it's, yeah, there was still a level of like, yeah, you're still gonna eat this stuff, fatty, but like I. They weren't even showing salad. I mean, for, when we were kids, they didn't even have them. And then, like, when they, then they had the salad shaker. Yeah. And it was the like, salad you know, shaker. Make sure we just and pour, like, you know, three quarters of it's just dressing. I'm not a guy that says make this shit illegal or whatever, but I am saying when you're a kid and you grow up in these environments eating this type of food, it is, it is not good. And I feel right. like a lot of kids today aren't because people are more educated now right. about food. They're more educated. But yeah. it is a luxury for the poor. Sure. Food is a luxury for poor people. It's the one thing you can do. I mean, even even a nice craft macaroni and cheese, it's a nice 
Shut up. Now you're now you're going somewhere. Well, that's, I'm that's not just trying, McDonald's. I'm not going to co-sign that. Why? I, what I'm saying you is... You got to put butter in it? You need to put butter. What I'm saying is... Stop, stop talking about Kraft macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. My point is... <laughs> That even a, a poor person can can wrangle enough money to go put a steak in their throat. Oh, put a nice like, steak and a baked potato in their throat. I thought you were talking about McDonald's. Well, no. that McDonald's really isn't a luxury. Okay. <laughs> it's a necessity, I guess, for certain people. Whatever. But my point is that that's why you, you go to Nobu, they can't keep us out. They right. can't. They can't, you know, when we walk in here, they can't go, excuse me, and yeah. take us in a back room and beat the shit out of us. Sure. They can't do that. Yet. Yet. It's coming. I'm sure it's coming. Right. They'll find a way to lock it all down. You've you've been in LA now for three days. What are your what are your thoughts on the geography, on the area? What's your There is a tremendous amount more horror than yeah. I anticipated. Yeah. I thought I thought really the horror would be that there's this kind of See me underbelly of this wealth, like we like yeah. there is when you go to New York. We're like, oh, like yes, yeah, these rich people, but like it's a little shady, and they're probably yeah. some of them are fucking kids, and some of them are you know doing so much drugs. No, like you're literally driving through Black Hawk Down to get to like Hollywood. There are certain parts of L.A. where the apocalypse has happened. Yeah, it's happened. There are tent cities. You have medieval. Uh, living situations in terms of like no no fucking bathrooms, right. no running water, and then you have diseases coming back uh, that have been gone for years. Things like dysentery that come from filthy living conditions. And I think our Uber driver said today to us before she went on a rant about the Jews. Remember right. that she goes, the Beverly Hills. She goes, is owned by the Jews. <laughs> All Jews. I was like, okay. Um, she told us it was 145,000 homeless people in Los Angeles. I estimated a little bit lower when we went to Skid Row. Yeah, because Ray's just looking at Skid Row. He's like, they can help these people. There's a few hundred people. Just help these people. Helpless man. First of all, we got to Skid Row. We rolled the window down and three people emerged from a tent and went, Ray? <laughs> and that's when we had to leave because I said, I don't know. How many people? I have a very specific fan base. You're the only guy that ate at Nobu that yeah. could have went to Skid Row and also fit in there perfectly. <laughs> like, absolutely perfectly. Um, but, I mean, how do you fix that problem? It's hard. Yeah, I mean, you have to... I mean, there's no projects here, uh, which is, is interesting. Well, they're, they're, right. There are... Probably there is public housing. Okay, but not like tower. Because I mean, there's a lot of people. I mean, the idea of there's, there's problems with vertically placing cheap housing or poor really housing for the poor. Like yes, in, you it know, it seems so. I'm just saying, like there there are pitfalls that you know to, to that method of doing it. But, but at the end of the day, like how we're, you know, how else are you going to do it when you have 145,000 people? And it's like, how much worse is it than tent cities? Right. Well, they, they talk about like how like oh, you, like you might get mugged. You know, people get mugged in the hallway because you know the visibility and like the corners and like and the the, the kind of diffusion of responsibility that happens when you live in this big building and you're not paying like your own rent. And like yeah, yeah, sure, but like dysentery. Botulism, you know, yeah. that's occurring on the streets. Like maybe we deal with that when we come to it. You yeah, know? yeah, those things are a lot worse. But what are some of the positives other than the return of the diseases, mm -hmm. the post-apocalyptic kind of hellscape? Oh, it's lovely. I, love, I want. I want to move here. There are nice things about it. I mean, there, what, there it's are cliche. nice things. But let's not spend too much time on the breakdown of society. Right. The fall of uh, a civil. Society and a fall of a social order. Let's not spend an inordinate amount of time on that when there are so many positives. Well, here's the reality: here's if the you're reality. gonna if you're gonna experience the end of the world on the front line, which these people are, why not do it in a place with a nice climate? It has a beautiful climate. It's wonderful, and that's what people don't talk about when they talk about. Uh, our inability to house hundreds of thousands of people who then shit on the street. Right. They don't mention that it is a nice climate here. Honestly. They don't balance it out and go, but dysentery, but plague is back, but lovely weather. I'm living in a better place than I was when we first did the podcast. Yes. I talk about, I think I would talk about it frequently how I, I'm not saying, now I'm not saying it's Skid Row where I was living. I'm not trying to, but I live in a windowless room. 
which in the summer got incredibly hot and muggy and just disgusting. And plus, I never threw my garbage out. So, like, would it be worse to live on the street in Skid Row? Maybe, like, on, you know, again, the, the, the diseases and the microbacteria. But I feel like, yeah, it's like it's like camping in the fall. It's nice. No, I, so your living situation when I first met you, and, and your driving situation, I mean, you drove a car where the window was broken. The window had rolled right. down and it was broken. And the first time I met There's you, no heat. there was no heat in the car. And you said, we have to smoke cigarettes to keep ourselves warm. Right. And that's when I kind of picked up the occasional ciggy again. Because I had quit for years. I quit smoking cigarettes for years. I was actually still drinking and smoking pot before I stopped smoking cigarettes. Right. I got rid of cigarettes and then I met Ray, and it's not your fault, right. but I met you and then driving back to Long Island, you were like, listen, we don't have heat in the car, but here's what we can do. <laughs> we can smoke cigarettes on the way back to Long Island. And I thought that was an, a fair compromise <laughs> and a good way to get heat. And then we would always go to that Taco Bell Pizza Hut or a diner. Right. The Taco Bell Pizza More Hut. More often than Taco Bell. Yeah, the Taco Bell. Because that was, it was 3 a.m. There wasn't a lot open at that point. No. And then we would sit in the, uh, in the parking lot of the Taco Bell Pizza Hut and recap the evening. Right. Over, recap. Over some nachos Bel grande. You've, you know, what's crazy about this area to me is that it gets a little worse mm -hmm. even since I've been here. It just creeps in. There's a few more tents. Right. There's a guy uh, with a shopping cart going down the block. Yeah. And it's more and more, and you wonder how long that takes until there's some type of breaking point. Well, I think because we went to Skid Row, but that was like the second day. But like on the way from LAX, it's just to Hollywood, like in, this area, in the nicer areas. It's even worse because you're prepared for Skid Row, right? And it's like, it, and there's a level of like, oh, these are these people are like at the brink. It's it's sad, but like just the kind of level of gradual horror and decay. What was and interesting just, about a lot of the people at Skid Row is they did seem happy. There were look. There was a. There was a. There was an. And this is just an observation. I'm not saying that. Don't you know? Be like, what are the, I'm saying. The outward appearance of a lot of these people was they were jubilant. Well, I believe they were. They were their, I think they were getting their buzz on a bit. But it makes you think about life. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. You go down Skid Row. It's the most horrible conditions ever, and there are people there that are dancing and they're happy. And then you meet people that live in these big, beautiful homes. And they're not that happy. We've, you, so we've, fuck Bernie Sanders <laughs> and fuck all you people that think you just need everything. You can make do with less. You'll be fine. Let it go. Manage expectations. This is what your expectations are killing you. You expect a good life. Stop that. Enough of that. You think about the yacht, how the yacht you want. How much is the gas to fill it up? Right. You don't even think about that. That's you don't. The thing. It's, it's, a, it's a burden you don't think about. Right. But my whole thing is be happy with less. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, look, we, we, we've tended to go the opposite route with that over the years. Yeah. But you know, the idea Meaning that, like, what? Well, a lot of people argue that, like, poor people are actually happier if you look at it. The rich are very unhappy. It's like, which is like a comforting feeling, to, a comforting expression. I'm not saying <laughs> that poor people are happy. I'm saying I went to Skid Row <laughs> and I saw people there that were happier than people that I knew, even if it was momentary. Right. Even if it was induced by a substance. Sure. I'm not making a sociopolitical point. I'm just, you got to observe things. Right. And you can't crowd an ideology. Like, you, you can't cram an ideology into every observation. You can't look at somebody dancing in the street and go, but I bet it, you know. Sometimes you just got to take it at face value and go, yes, this gentleman would probably rather be in another situation. Well, However, humans are incredibly adaptable. And the one thing I will say for the people at Skid Row, I don't think they're going to drive down to Beverly Hills and like, you know, lusting over that. Because like, a big part of it's like about, you know, comparative wealth and comparative. And like, yes. And you're not really thinking about that flamingo in the, in the front yard of that you're, nice you're, mansion. You're, you're understanding this is what it is. Yeah. You're not reaching. The reach is really what gets you. The reach is what gets you. So That's yeah, part I, of our new <laughs> motivational program. This new shirt we'll be printing. Yeah, the reach is what gets you. Stay low. 
Stay low to the ground. Yeah. But it's also not just, look, not everything about like how what I was surprised about was just like horror. Yeah. It's more just like a lot of LA. Now, once we got close to Hollywood and we went to Malibu, like a lot of beautiful spots, but a lot of it was just like just the worst parts of Long Island. Like, like, like a lot of it felt like the LIE spread out over like a, a much wider But it's surface not area. funny. Yeah. Like Long Island is funny. Right. Because the people in Long Island are retarded. Right. And that's what makes it funny because they're retarded and yet somehow many of them have managed to acquire things that they never should have had and still aren't happy with and maintain a sense of victimhood. They're always a grieved party no matter what happens. They inherit houses. They complain about the taxes on the houses they inherit. <laughs> it just never ends. They're always, someone's always coming trying to kill them. MS-13 is always in the window with a machete going at them. And the only person who'll save them is Sean Hannity. <laughs> Sean Hannity in his freedom concert. There's nothing better than watching people in Long Island, white people who had a culture back when it required some degree of like, you know, boats and learning how to, whatever. And like being, a, a you know, appreciating that you lived by the sea and the ocean. But then once people traded that in for just the suburban sloth of it all, right. they are cultureless people like Connecticut. So when white people have no culture, they start going to like country Western bands. They start pretending they're like country Western. <laughs> so Sean Hannity used to have these freedom concerts where like Montgomery Gentry would perform and like Long Island guys would go and Montgomery Gentry would be like, how was a cowboy, you know? And they'd be like, yes, me. And they would, because they don't, there's no real culture that they identify with. They're just like, they want to be like, I'm white. I'm proud of my family and my faith, even though I don't like my family and I haven't been to church. <laughs> At some point, and it's after I grew up, like, was like, you know, a kid, but like Deer Park, where I grew up, acquired multiple like line dancing bars. Yeah. This is, is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Because it, what else did they have? Nothing else to do. And uh, the other thing is uh, the Bernie put the Rogan clip out and a, a lot of people flipped out. You're going to lose it. Here's the deal. You're yeah. going to lose again. You want to lose. You fetishize being a loser and you want to lose. You're, you're putting people through these purity tests it's gonna it's gonna bite you rogan is such an asset to have and whether I, I don't even think it's fair by the way i would be like it's not fair to put out a clip of someone as an official endorsement right. if they haven't officially endorsed you i don't know that they had a conversation with joe or not right. but my whole thing is like to get angry yeah. about it is so fucking childish and I, I mean I, I don't know how more progressive because i listened to over the years a bunch of you know rogan stuff and like I don't know how much more progressive he can be. They want him to cut his dick off. Yeah, I mean... They want him to transition. He could be more progressive if no, he no, cut no. his dick I, off I on more, air and yeah. became a woman. Of course he could That's be what more. they're looking for. They want him to saw his <laughs> cock off and shove it in Barry Rice's throat and then and then that's how he could be more progressive, okay? <laughs> he takes his dick off and then he throws it in Barry Weiss's face and goes, free Palestine! And then it would be okay to right. endorse Bernie Sanders. He's had on Abby Martin, Kyle Kuklinski, Cornell West, Bernie Sanders, David Pakman. He talked to Matt Taibbi in his three to four hour conversations about things like, you know, prison industrial complex, uh, Israel and Palestine, race, inequality, all of those things. And you have you turn on CNN, they've got Richard Spencer, Stormy Daniels. Right. Uh, Rachel Maddow is fucking talking about uh, uh, Putin hiding in a closet and then she goes, has dinner with Roger Ailes and she probably puts on a strap on and fucks him. So let's get real. Rachel Maddow and Roger Ailes have dinner together. You, it's all fake. He has a conversation dummies. with Milo. Uh, Vice, you know, talks to fucking, uh, what was it, Cant Cantwell. Yeah. And they get a fucking Emmy for it. Right. Rachel Maddow... It, it was like close with Roger Ailes. Yeah. So it's professional. It does stop. And that's why people that are like online or people that get their news from these. So I love my dad, but here's what happened to my father's brain. It's been rotted because he's gotten his news from people like Chris Matthews and Chris Matthews. When the whole Epstein thing happened, Chris Matthews, who is a Irish fat blowhard. Okay 
who does nothing but parrot the party line of anything that's going on, loves Washington, loves powerful people, right. is the opposite of a journalist, Is it, it, it looks like a hunk of Irish soda bread, uh, is not... He's nowhere near Tim Russert, even though Tim Russert not yeah, he, perfect. He took over me the better. press, right? No, okay. no, someone else. I don't think Chris Matthews. No, Chris Matthews was always that guy in hardball. He was like, ha, right. ha. He was parodied constantly yeah, yeah. with good reason. When the whole Epstein thing happened, this was Chris Matthews' hot take. Okay, by the way. By the way, not only should the Irish not be allowed to speak publicly, they should be chained at all times <laughs> to, to, to their physical job. Okay? Chris... <laughs> Chris Matthews, <laughs> Chris, no, but they just don't, let's, let's be, I'm sick of lying. Most Irish people, excluding me, <laughs> most Irish people just are not supposed to think. They're supposed to emote. They're supposed to sing. They're supposed to dance and they're supposed to tell tales, but they're not supposed to like break it down. So this was Chris Matthews response. When the Epstein things happen, he goes, you know, a lot of these politicians end up take because they, he goes, they become friends with these nefarious characters because they don't have a lot of money. So they need to fly places because they're <laughs> politicians. They need to go to places. So they end up forming relationships with these, you know, nefarious characters, these dark, and they don't know what's going on. They don't know. How can they know? Well, they're going to wait in the airport for 10 minutes? Yeah. So Bill and Hillary Clinton can't afford right. to go anywhere. So Bill has to fly. And where do they all need to go? The Virgin Islands? Where right. are they going? They got, they got, they got like a million dollar speaking fee somewhere. Yeah. It, it, but again, imagine, think of the people who got their news from that system right. for years. Because even the articles written about Epstein from the mainstream press are like, yeah, it's a little fishy. Right. Now, the flip side of that is if you go online, you know, you know, it's we we all know what online is. It's just a fucking, you know, it's it's completely no, it, it, a free for all. The guy in, in you know, goat horns, just you know, uh, <laughs> sacrificing the Baphomet. But right. it's, it's like there's no there's no moderation. There's but. no moderation. But in this case, this is the one case where they're mostly right. Yeah, they're mostly right. <laughs> yeah, it's it, but that's the real problem. The real problem is that our parents got their news, and that's why we have the country we do. You eat poison, right. you get your news from people that literally should not be allowed to speak publicly, who are just handed talking points. Allowed to say, so you get your news from these people, you eat at Wendy's, you drink, you get prescribed all these drugs, and then at the end of everything, it's like, yeah, there's nothing left. Right. Nothing's left. It's all gone. And then you have to deal with all these massive problems, like 40% of the labor force is going to be automated. And like our parents just want to play golf and get a condo. They don't, they're like, what do you, what? They're like, who gives a shit? What do you mean 40% of the labor force? Good. They're like, that sounds nice. Like, you tell people that. You tell people that are older that. They go, 40% of the labor force is going to be automated. They're like, you kids have it so easy. You have no idea how lucky you are. You know, you're going to have- I hate waiting on lines in the car wash. You know, the labor force, they're just, it's, they're going to be, all, these kids are going to have automated, you know? You know, my son told me the other day, Vinny, he said 40% of the labor force is going to be robots. They're going to be sitting pretty, these kids. <laughs> they're going to be sitting pretty, these guys. I mean, can you believe how lucky they are? Well, that is on some weird way. Like, if you actually like look in the marks, I'm not saying I've read a lot of Das Kapital, but, you know- Ray is- Become a fat Marxist. I'm not. <laughs> which is somehow uh, uh, living in Brooklyn is somehow his journey to become like this fat. He went from a fat libertarian to a fat Marxist. Because there's two places you can go from libertarian. You stay fat, but you go to either Marx or you go to Nazi. But you stay. At you're, a, uh, you're more of a Marxist than I am. I, I argue because I'm sexy. I argue if we can afford healthcare and if we can afford universal healthcare. And you go. We just gotta do it. Fuck it. I, I'm not a Marxist. I just don't care what happens. Yeah. That's a different thing. I'm saying, I look. I, I have no investment in literally what happens. Whatever. I am not a Marxist. You should read a little Marxist. You know what you're talking about if you want to oppose them. Point is, a bit. the idea of it is Ray that- Ray has Das Kapital balanced on his stomach in a public bus in Brooklyn, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> There's a woman sitting next to him just nursing her baby, and you're like, listen, that's okay. You can let it out. We're all human beings here. You can let it out, baby. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I know why you're in the position you're in. <laughs> this man wrote a whole book on it. You see what happened with capitalism? 
all I'm look, there, there, there is some part of it where it's like we're supposed to get to a point where we can all just like relax and achieve higher consciousness. Mullen told shit. me about this. It's like fully automated luxury communism, which Mullen was telling me. He was saying it was a joke. It made me laugh. Where just everyone fucks all day and right. money's fake. I don't know. So some idiot. Money's already fake. Some idiot will <laughs> message me and be like, "It's actually." Well, Merck is really smart. Yeah, we yeah, raised girlfriends going to canvas with Bernie Sanders and fucking where's she going? Uh, New Hampshire. We're gonna go. We want to film ourselves canvassing for Bernie Sanders in Beverly Hills. Yeah, just standing outside gates and screaming. <laughs> Have you thought about? Yeah, give him back a little bit. Have you thought? Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Have you heard Bernie Sanders? <laughs> He's also Jewish. <laughs> Don't you have enough? Don't you? <laughs> have you no decency, sir? <laughs> At long last, have you no decency? We should have a can just to get coins I, in. I just think it would be absolutely hilarious to have the great Ray Comp and myself canvassing for Bernie Sanders in Beverly Hills, uh, California, and being you know attacked by guard dogs and tased. <laughs> Folks, you know me. I always try to put you on to cool stuff. It's part of what I do here on the show. It's not all just comedy and doom and gloom. It's, uh, you know, uh, an advice podcast for many of you. I give good advice, but I also, you know, put you on to things that you might like. One of those things is a podcast. It's called Another Bachelor Podcast. It's 2020 and there's a lot going on. We're on the brink of World War III. Australia is engulfed in flames. There's an impeachment trial coming up and the world is being sucked off its mana. But there is nothing more important going on right now than season 24 of ABC's The Bachelor. If you're listening to my podcast, you're obviously a fan of that program and you're probably tuning in every week. But you're wasting your fucking time if you're not listening to a Bachelor companion podcast. It's what's done. The best one out there, we've talked about it before, is another Bachelor podcast featuring Nick, who has schizophrenic parents, Dylan, who's Jewish, and Pat, who's an older man. After hearing the ad read I did last week, Pat, as I assumed he might in the near future, attempted to take his own life. While he is independently wealthy with a child on the way, my words called into question his reason. I shit on these guys uh, in as a joke, and I know that and I, because, listen, they're doing a podcast about The Bachelor. A lot of people do it, and a lot of people are successful at it. Now, if you're a fan of The Bachelor and you want to listen to a companion podcast, go check their podcast out. I think it's, I think it's well worth checking out. Um, I'm going to be a guest on their podcast about Below Deck because I do have an interest in talking about Below Deck. I don't have an interest to talk about The Bachelor. I don't know why I find Below Deck so interesting. It's just about people who charter yachts, whatever. But it's interesting. Um, and I think they're okay with me shitting on them as a joke. I mean, one of them might might was upset about it, I think, or whatever. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know who any of these people are. I will never meet. I will never meet these people in my life. Like I'll never. I will never meet them, ever. Like if I'm in a room with these people, it's because I'm meeting someone else that they are somehow near. But like I would never be in the same. Like unless like we're in an airport. Like we'd be in an airport and we'd bump into each other. But there would there would be no like meaningful interaction between me and them and that's not a knock and that's not an insult the only the only the only difference between me and them would be that i'm i'm insanely talented <laughs> insanely talented and i spend time with other insanely talented people that's that's the only that's it there's no there's no diff like everyone's a human being i respect everybody but that is the, the differential that's it. Nothing else, by the way. I mean, we're carbon-based life forms. I mean, the whole thing. Um, but I would give The Bachelor podcast a shot because why not? Why not if you enjoy The Bachelor? Is this a show where they have to survive in the woods naked? No, that's Naked and Afraid. Okay, I've seen that one. The Bachelor is about a bunch of women who compete for the affections of one man. Can I get on this? I think it would be great if you were, they should do a bachelor skid row Yeah, where you are the bachelor and then all the women still choose to go back to skid row. A lot of those women aren't not unattractive. What? The women in skid row. They I, weren't I bad at all. They weren't bad at all. I, I could, I, I could I, see you dating them too. What about give them a rose? Yes. You give them a rose. Here's the deal. 
What's the point of being a father if you know you'll fail? What's the point of doing anything, really? What's the point of even sticking around? This is about the guy, I guess, who I killed, tried to kill himself after I talked about him. He was found in a bathtub by his podcast buddies who resuscitated <laughs> him with the news that the ad read I did last week was, it did, in fact, move the numbers. So people are checking it out. So tune in every week to another Bachelor podcast on iTunes, YouTube, and Spotify. Remember, everyone, escapism is the only thing that matters right now. There is nothing you can do to prevent us from annihilation. The only other thing you can do is find ways to cope. So listen to another Bachelor podcast or their spinoff show recapping Bravo's hit series Below Deck, another Below Deck podcast, and also available where you get your podcasts. I mean, I, 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 I you know, go check it out. I wish these guys the best. I mean, I, listen, I mean, you know, here, here's what it is. Here's what it really is. No one respects you. <laughs> like, that's what it is. What, if you're a producer of a podcast, unless you're Jamie Vernon, no one respects you. That's what it is. It's just what it, you're replaceable. You're, I mean, I, it's not, I'm glad you do your job well, but it's, it's not really, it's just not a thing. Like, it's not. My plumber is, is part-time, does my taxes, too. Yeah, it's kind of like that. You know? I like specialization, <laughs> where someone specializes in something. Like, if someone came up to me and goes, you, in a nice restaurant, they go, you know who's cooking in the back? <laughs> Bruce Springsteen. I'd go, why? <laughs> why is Bruce Springsteen making our dinner? But maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it would be great. It's midnight in America. Here's your quesadilla. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I don't know. <laughs> So these podcast producers right now, they're getting very chatty. Yeah. They're getting very chatty because they're they're sick of being behind the the scenes. Well, it looks so because easy. Because they think it's a big mistake. Yeah. <laughs> they think it's a big mistake that they sit behind the scenes and other people don't. They all think it's a cruel twist of fate. And it's just that they they should be, Theo Vaughn should be producing your podcast. <laughs> That's what these guys think. And when they go, when they put their head on the pillow in their manic minds, they think that they are the reason that Theo is funny. They think they're doing it. This is the result of Occupy Wall Street. Your job, <laughs> your job is going to be done by AI <laughs> last week. So I'm glad you're so here's reality. And these are sweet kids. And I don't want anyone to think this is negative. I'm not trying to be negative now. No. I'm just trying to be and people. I appreciate it because I would if listen, if you if you listen to The Bachelor, watch another Bachelor podcast. Do I and need it, to listen to The Bachelor? Can I just enjoy the shut podcast? Up. Just listen to the fucking podcast, okay? And I <laughs> and I listen, I'm not trying to be a dick to anybody because I love everyone. I think everyone's worthy of of at least life. <laughs> you know what I mean? At least be here on earth. But like you know, just make it good. Like, I hope it's a great podcast. And I'm sure it's not that bad. Right. I'm sure it's not that bad. But, like, that's what it is. It's like, you're not going to get famous by having, like, um, you know, a fucking, you know, like, I, I, I don't know. Like the show lasts for a certain amount of time, then it's over. It's a fun podcast, right? right? So it's just fun. It's nice that they're also doing below deck. So they're expanding. They're doing like a bunch of different things, you know? I'm not trying to shit on what they're doing, by the way. I'm not trying to shit on what they're doing. Right. It, it, I respect the, the people who are out there hustling. But like, don't, just like, don't just, just, I think you get it, you know? <laughs> Just understand what it is. So don't be offended when I like, there's people that listen to the ad that are offended. Like one of the guys got offended. First of all, if you're, if you're offended by anything I say, why are you doing anything comedically? So don't be offended by what I say. If you're offended by what I say, if you're offended by what I say, don't do the ad. I don't care. It, it means nothing to me. Less than, I can't explain to you how <laughs> little this means to me to do. Le genuinely, less than nothing. Um, but don't be offended by it because I hope people do genuinely check out your show. But this isn't real. It's not real. And so I just want you when you go to bed every night to know that it isn't, it's not a real thing you're doing. And, and I don't mean the show isn't real. 
I don't mean the show isn't real. Your show is real. I mean your life. <laughs> your, your existence on planet Earth isn't real. It's not real. You're an avatar. You're an idea. You're an avatar. You're a shadow that's reflected off a lake in the moonlight. But that being said, I would check out the show. I'm going to appear on their Below Deck podcast, potentially not now after this ad. But so listen, it's called Another Bachelor Podcast. <laughs> and their spinoff show, their spinoff show, <laughs> they're spinning off, spinning off. If you like the right. <laughs> if you like this, you'll love that. Their spinoff show is called Below Deck. It's another Below Deck podcast. Can I do it? A podcast about like fidget spinners, maybe. Yeah, they're 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 done now. <laughs> so that's it. I don't want to listen again. I love everybody. I hope everybody loves me. It's all in good fun. It's all in good humor. We're all kidding around. So don't be offended. But like to hear that anyone's offended by anything I said in an ad read is is absurd to me. And it's it's really crazy because I called the kid who has me doing these reads and he wasn't offended, but he's like, yeah, one of our, the guys was like a little offended. And it's like, it's like, well, what do you think it is? This is my dream. You're doing a bachelor recap podcast and you're advertising on another podcast <laughs> and you're offended about what the guy said. Like, what do you think you're doing? What world are you living in? Where it's none of it's real. What we're doing isn't real. It's not real. If my fucking show, which is great and listened to by people, isn't real, if Hollywood isn't real, if the country isn't real, none of it's real. It's a simulation. If all of it isn't real, how in God's name is your Bachelor Recap podcast real? How are you getting upset about it? Think to yourself that. Your metadata on a fucking alien's iPhone, <laughs> dummy. Whew. That's all I'm saying. It's 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 more metaphysical. I'm not going at you, you simpleton. I'm not going at you. What I'm saying is that it's 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 you know, just enjoy. Just enjoy that you're in a unique period in history. In five years, you're not going to be making a trillion dollars. It's over soon. You're at the end of this now. It's coming to an end. Podcasting is going to end soon. I don't know when it is, but it's going to end. So just enjoy what it is while it is. Don't get angry about what I say. None of it matters. It's all, it's all fun. None of it's real. It's not real. The Below Desk spinoff podcast where you sit down and ask words, starts. What are we do? do? Which episode did we cover last week? Did, did we cover three or four? Shut up. Just enjoy it because one day you're going to be dead and no one is going to care. Do you know what I mean? No one is going to care about your death. Nobody. No one will remember you. No one will speak kindly of you. No one will value any of your achievements or accomplishments. You'll just be, you know how I know that? Because when I went to it's the Spokane Comedy Club, there were four hot dogs on the menu and they were the Carlin, the Pryor, the Rivers, the whatever. And these are the greatest comics that ever lived and they just became hot dogs, okay? And you guys are almost as talented as Pryor, <laughs> okay? But not. But like, you're like almost there. So just don't be upset. That's all I'm saying. It's a fun ad. You can keep running them if you want. I hope people check out the podcast. If you don't want to run them, that's fine too. Um, you know, if I ever see you in person, obviously we'll, we'll never speak. I'm kidding. Again. No, it's my I don't like what he said. I don't like what he said about my Bachelor podcast. I don't like it. It makes me upset. <laughs> How am I going to go home to my wife and kids that I'm feeding off my Bachelor podcast when this guy's going to shit on it? You know what happened? You and Tim Dillon did that fat thing, and we got a Bachelor podcast, and we advertise on a show. You know what this fat faggot did? 
he shit on it, trying to make it like it was like stupid or something. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah, no, he didn't say nothing about that Below Deck podcast. He kind of likes that one, but he didn't like all that. So just, again, calm down. Check it out. It's another It's another Bachelor podcast and another Below Deck podcast. And who are the three guys again? It's Nick, Dylan, and Pat. Nick, Dylan, and Pat. I think Dylan was the one who got mad. I don't think Pat got mad. He's the older guy, and Nick didn't get mad. But I think Dylan got mad. I don't know who is Dylan. Dylan Look it up. Roof. Find him. Find him. It's not Dylan Roof. Dylan Roof has a Wikipedia. <laughs> so let's apologize to Dylan. Who's it? I'm looking it up. Isn't he the guy that worked at Corolla? With them, oh, yeah, inside baseball over here. Oh boy! Well, d- didn't we meet him when we went to Corolla? Isn't it that guy, Dylan Pete Wren? Is that I him? I have no idea. Edit his name out. Okay, yeah, I'll bleep that out. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because God only knows what our people. Yeah, <laughs> is it's Dylan Wren, but I'll bleep that out. Yeah, Dylan. I mean, they can look it up. It's on the podcast bio, but we don't want to make it easy. <laughs> Dylan, we're Here's kidding, his address. We're kidding around, Dylan. You know, it's a joke. It's you doing a bachelor podcast. Can I see him? Is there another photo of him? That's him. There's no photos of him at all. I mean, this is his Twitter. Him. That's him, I think. Right here. Yeah, he's a Jew, huh? <laughs> that guy's a real Jew. That guy's a real big Jew face. That's what it is. You could call me a Mick face. That guy's got a Jew fucking face. You see that from coming from a mile away. You see that? <laughs> We're 16 minutes into this read. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> We're trying to have fun, Dylan. Dylan, the only chance of getting fucking <laughs> listeners is this. What are you fucking high? What do you want, crack? It gives a shit about your Bachelor podcast? Unless we make it fucking interesting. Okay? You know? You're not cleaning Adam Carolla's toilets because you're a genius. Are there a lot of Bachelor? Because it's another Bachelor podcast. So I assume it's a, I'm sure, yeah. it's a plethora of these. Yeah, there's, there's ones that are doing very good. I'll tell you how good they're doing. They don't advertise on my show. They don't want a 20-minute harangue. <laughs> but I'm serious. I, I support art. <laughs> and artists. And that's what we do here. So if you can be, if you can enjoy that and you can be playful and have fun with it, but if you're going to be serious about it, let's just not do it. And I don't care about the money and I don't care about anything and I clearly don't. I've pissed off, a, you know, and said a lot crazier shit about a lot more people that can help me out. Then it's fucking nonsense. <laughs> so let's just get, come to fucking reality and understand that we're having a lot of fun with this. You know what I mean? This is this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get you listeners. We're trying to get me listeners. Just don't 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 be angry. This isn't like this the Man- f- it's not the Manhattan Project. It's a feud now though. You're starting on a podcast feud. You're in a feud with the another botch of podcast guys. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Had <laughs> us. <laughs> I mean, it's not a feud. I, I, I listen. I like Nick. He's a, he's a, he's, you know, he's a person on Earth. <laughs> that you know, I would, I don't want him to like die. Cause I don't want anyone to die. Some people. Yeah, should I, die. I, come on. <laughs> so that's where we're at with this. We want you to check out another Bachelor podcast with Dylan, the older guy. Cause I nailed them when I did the first read. I kind of nailed them. One guy. You know, and then there's the other guy. There's Dylan's guy that takes it way too seriously. And then Nick just probably has fun with it. And Dylan's just probably like taking it way too seriously. And it's just like, dude. Let me get through the recap first. Yeah, then we'll make jokes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He's like, you, you don't know how to do it. <laughs> you know, if it's not done right, no one's going to listen. I fucking. What are you imagining? A world where you tell your grandchild, you go, I had a bachelor podcast. I had a bachelor. Well, I wouldn't be Italian. With Jew, it's like I had a bachelor. I'm trying to get Jewy. I had a bachelor podcast. That's how I made my money. My grandfather worked at the Diamond District. I had a podcast about a show called Below Deck. 
When you saw The Bachelor making out with Tina in the jacuzzi, <laughs> how do you deconstruct that? <laughs> oh, boy. Do you think we've done enough time for this? We're at 20 minutes now. I mean, you get what you pay for, don't you, boys? <laughs> you get what you pay for. I'm kidding about cleaning Adam to crawl his toilets. I'm sure you didn't do that. You know, again, enough. We told to do that. No, you did do it, probably, <laughs> but it's not my business. Was he going to do it himself? <laughs> <laughs> so check out another Bachelor podcast and another Below Deck podcast. Thank you. I feel like in the, the Democratic Party of, of yesteryear, there was a place for guys like us. You know? Yes. There was, there was a little more muscle than Democratic Party. Well, this country, Party. I mean, listen, Brian Dennehy was the, that's what people used to find sexy. Se <laughs> yes, shut your fat mouth. Brian Dennehy was a man, okay? He didn't go to the gym like a faggot. He was a man. He had a gut. He drank beer. He ate food. And he, he, and he got in his uh, police car, and he, and he protected the women and children. And that turned women on, Irish women on. It turned them on. It turned women on to see a man of stature with a little heft, little heft, and that was a sex symbol. Now, because that is now the men that are attractive now are literally there to describe them as effeminate. It's like straight men that people consider attractive. Are, right. Timothy Chalamet is a feather. Yeah. He is a feather. He is the feather from the beginning of Forrest Gump. They just, he just floats around. He doesn't have sex organs. He doesn't have a sexuality. He doesn't exist. He's just a wisp of uh, hair on his entire body. He's just like this tiny little. He makes Dustin Hoffman look like Tenet Channing. Call Tatum. me by your name should have featured me. <laughs> that that that's what it should have been. It should have been me <laughs> and call me by your name. I would have sucked off whatever his name is. Army Hammer. And in and 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 I said I tweeted once a guy Branham. I said I said I should be a call me by your name because nobody would ever believe you'd travel to Italy. And I was like, <laughs> good. That was good. Mm. Uh, but that's what call me by your name should have been. It should have been you know. But we've 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 destroyed the mail. We've destroyed the mail. We've gone from Brian Dennehy and people like uh, what's that guy's name he used to date Lonnie Anderson. I don't know. Uh, Rock Hudson? No. They, no. Burt Reynolds. Oh, yeah. We went Burt from... Reynolds. Yeah, I, that's I, a man. Of course he is. You went... That's right. We went from Burt Reynolds to Timothy Chalamet. Timothy Chalamet is like... He's like a, he's like a Petri dish. He's barely alive. He's uncooked. He's uncooked. It's just, I, look, I don't know... He is uncooked. They just took him out of a pot. He's playing Bob Dylan. Yeah, I look. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> it's it, 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 it says something. He's genderless. Yeah. Timothy Chalamet is what Hollywood will be just androgynous drone people who have no gender, and they they all they they look perpetually like 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 children with a disease. We're entering a kind of end time. Yes. In that like Get into this. We've never done this before the end times. <laughs> Get into this. This is new. Where the Tell us about the end, right? <laughs> we, we we talk a lot of shit about how these Hollywood guys want to fuck kids. Right. But what we're now seeing is is they're kind of coming to a singularity where the kids the adults are children now. Where The adults are children now. We're, Keep the, going. You, the the body type of a child, the body type of a wafy twink, right? You know, of, of of a of a prepubescent kind of boy with the face of sort of a man, but not really. Where are my roles? This is what I'm saying. Where are my roles? Where are the roles for people that have skin problems? <laughs> Why, when I go outside, does everyone look? Like they're one foot out of a coffin. Well, they didn't spend years in the crack house. But my point <laughs> is this. They would they'd be talented if they did. Yeah. They suck. He sucks. Chalamet's a bad Terrible. actor. Yeah. He's a bad actor, folks. You're, he's bad. He's not good. No, he, I, I watch Little Women. I mean, people. Oh, my God. Well, look, we get the screen. Listen to me. I watch Little Women. We get the screen. Sir, we mean the movie. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. But I've watched Little Women. I like Little Women because you can imagine putting them in a picnic basket and then open them up and then they pop out. Is that wrong? Am I am I technically representing myself or is my lawyer present? 
Look, I'm just saying, I like Lady Bird. I thought it was a fine enough movie. I, I, I watched it at a screening with Greta Gerwig present, and I accidentally, you know, bumped into her while I was trying to get some wine. Uh, I think I knocked her over a little bit, but that's not important. <laughs> Point is, I, I'm, I'm a, not a fan, but yeah, I, I, I went into it with open arms. I wasn't like, you know, because uh, there's, there's a narrative that went along with Little Women. I don't know if everyone's, you know, aware of it, but the New York Times. Uh, Vogue. No, some people have lives. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, but yeah, but this whole, we have a problem of men watching little women, right? Like where, like basically, men aren't interested in watching. No, they don't want to see it. They're dismissive of it. It's a fucking children's book from the, the Civil War right. about these middle class white women who like oh, I don't want to get married, but they end up getting married. I mean, the movie was terrible, right? And uh, he was he was all, he's in it. He's playing which woman is he? <laughs> uh, I forget his character. <laughs> Got ya. <laughs> Got ya, Chalamet. Um, if he's watching, you weren't very good. Uh, wasn't a fan. But the whole thing was very flat and dry. But that's what it we're is. We're all though. on the same. We're on. It's all the same, Chalamet. <laughs> you get that? You think you're better than me? You think you're better than me? Now, I know that you have all like, all kinds of people and whatever. and you, whatever. I don't care. We are. We're, it's the same thing. This is Little Women. This is the Godfather now. You ever work in a morgue? This is... <laughs> <laughs> This is it now. Because of technology, this is this is it. This is Rocky. You want to fight me? <laughs> He'll beat the shit out of you. I would love to see Timothy Chalamet beat the shit out of Ray Com. I don't care how much good your cardio is. I would is. love to see Timothy Chalamet just fucking house yeah, you. I, look, I know how to use my weight to my advantage. All right? I, I would just love to see him beat the shit He's out of you. He's not going to. I would like to see I'm going to wrap him up if he fucking hits him. I would like me. to see Timothy Chalamet I will do not... a pressure point thing on you, and you just That's drop dead. That's fake shit. I don't what know. Are you, that what, it... are you some kid in the 70s watching a Bruce Lee film? He's going to do a circle of the, the, the fist of death on you. No, I'm just saying there's ways to put you on the ground. Not for a child versus a grown fat man. Okay, well, we'll see. This is one of those things where like, it's like, you know. He offers air, Chalamet. Accept the fight. You bet, you know, you got to throw... the fight. You better throw the first punch. Don't bring your bodyguard unless, you know, he's going to stand back. the Staples Center. Ray Comp fights a homeless woman <laughs> at, uh, <laughs> we're starting at a small bar, <laughs> and we're going to see if we can fill that. Sell 30 tickets. <laughs> I think we can. But my point is that, is he a good actor? When I say he's a bad actor, I, I'm not impressed. Right. I'm, am I wrong? No, look. You who watch is a good actor? Name me a younger actor who you think is good. Shy is great. Shia LaBeouf is great because he's mentally ill. Yeah, I mean, he's also not that young anymore. He's not uh, that young. But um, who's great? Who who have I seen in recent memory? The, the kid from, did you see how the, the the killing of a sacred deer? No. That kid's weird and good. Like, he's interesting. Uh, it had, uh, who's the guy? Colin. Uh, I don't know. The Irish guy. He's famous. Farrell, uh, Colin yeah, Farrell. Yeah, yeah. Co Colin Farrell. Yeah, Farrell. Yeah. Colin Farrell. Um, other, what else came out this year? Young you know, people in their 20s. I'm trying to think. I love how every agent probably tells our Irish actor, don't ever say anything that's not written on a script. Right. If anyone asks you anything the way you feel about anything, just don't tell them. Right. <laughs> don't ever say anything. If you're ever somewhere and someone puts a microphone in your face and wants you to comment on anything, please don't. Right. Thank you. Uh, what else was big this year? What were the, the, the big movies this year? I'm, I'm trying to check my memory. We again. just don't, we don't have a lot of black people in Ireland is what I'm saying. And, I mean, it's just kind of nice living with people that look like you. That's all. I don't. Look, what's like, the problem? The, the kid who plays Spider Man. That uh, he he's 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 got like look. It's not a complex role, but much more charming than Chalamet. Uh, yeah. What's yeah. Name? Uh, Tom Holland. Tom Holland. Put Tom Holland into more things. Put him into Little Women. What? Tom Holland's a little skinny guy. I'm not. He's he's not. I'm not, I'm not saying put people who look like me into fucking. You know. I, and now that's where I disagree. I am. <laughs> I am. No, but it's a better movie. Listen. Little Women with You is a better movie. It would be more interesting. It's a better movie to put a fat, bearded pig <laughs> in a in a little, a co what do they live in, a little Civil War cottage or something? It's, like a, it's a nice house. They're living in a nice house, and then you have this, yeah. and it's Little Women <laughs> and Hello, him. Joe. I've come to court you. Yeah. Hello, listen. I've come to court you. I brought some warm butter. Would you, would you like to sit on the porch with me while I regale you of some tales from the war? Oh, Danny Joe, boy. we're fighting to free the slaves. I had a slave in the town, but I freed him before the war, technically. He still does some work for me and my family. I like him very much. Joe, would you make love to me now under the starlight? 
I mean, it's a better film. I'm yeah. picturing it immediately. <laughs> you're in like a, a like a like a, a like, seersucker. Like, no, you're in like a, the a, 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 whatever the war uniform of oh, uh, of the uh, Union Army. Oh, is. Union Jack. Yeah, you're in the Union Jack, and you and and you just and you're sitting there <laughs> on the porch, bursting out of my seams. Yeah, bursting out of your seams. <laughs> And Joe J- J- is sitting there, and she's like unhappy. <laughs> Can I touch your knee? And you're like, Joe, I've been thinking of you during many a long night in the field. <laughs> um, Do you think you'll ever get to cook as good as your mother, Joe? <laughs> your mother is such a good cook. I love her sausage biscuits. This meat is very tender. I like tender meat, Joe. That's one thing you should know about Raymond. <laughs> I like tender meat. And free slaves. Those are my two favorite things. <laughs> But here's my thing with Shamay. Shamay, no hate on you, Shamay. We'll hang out. We're boys. I love you. You're my friend. Let's get some pokey. I got to remember that I'm in Hollywood now. And at any time, I can become best friends with any of these people. So I'm just kidding. Uh, Timothy Chalamet, if you want to hang out, let's hang out. I'm kidding. I'm joking. No, yeah, no. It's a joke. Billie Eilish, if you want to hang, yeah. hang out with me and go drink blood by the L.A. River or whatever you do, <laughs> I <laughs> I will do it with you. I will do it. I could be a backup dancer. If you want to go to Winchell's and eat donuts, Billy, let's do it. Do you let's see a lot of famous it. people eating donuts around here? Cause I, Not a big really. Donut culture. Ray here. is fascinated by the homeless donut culture. You, yeah. It is something that you. We need to take you to a late. Maybe tonight we'll take you to a late night donut shop. Sure. Because you. Really, really, you 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 comment on Yum Yum Donuts, and you notice Winchell. You've noticed a lot of the donut shops. A lot of donut shops. It's just something that like, we have plenty of Dunkin' Donuts, but it never feels like the Dunkin' Donuts or like the donuts now, never seem Ben prominent. knows a little bit about the donut shops. Now, obviously, Mexican people love sugar. Yeah. They love what do they call it? Pandelus, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Pandelus. Yeah. They love sugar and they love the sweets, and it's just what it is. It's right. not racism. It's what it fuck it is. <laughs> And they work very long hours, and they need coffee and sweets, and mm-hmm. that's what the game is. Mm-hmm. I also like sweets, and co- so <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> okay? Don't hit me up being, I'm Mexican, I actually don't like that. Well, then you see, you're you one of the ones that suck. <laughs> so, but tell us a little bit about the donut culture, because you know about it, because you're, you've you spent L.A. around slugs. Mm-hmm. Like, you kind of know, and I don't mean Mexican slugs, I mean donut shops that are open all night are not always attended. The Mexicans go in the morning because then they go to work. Mm-hmm. So what what is it about the donut shops? Do 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 a little. Well, I'm glad you didn't make me say the Mexican thing on my own. But I'm glad you said that. It's not racist to say Mexicans like sugar. No, they're up at four in the morning. They need their sugar and their caffeine to get going. Correct. It is what it is. Correct. But there's some iconic places. We might take you to Donut Prince. Uh, I think donut Prince. Prince. Donut Prince. Yeah, up in Burbank by the Safari Inn. Like 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 the son of a king, Prince. I mean, when you get there, it's not really. What is it's, iconic about Donut Prince? Um, I know Tom Green used to like periscope and like march down there, and people would like follow him down the street. Okay, to go well, to Donut that's Prince. That's kind of well, that's kind of light in terms of the <laughs> iconic. But like that and Bob's Big Boy are two kind of iconic places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but the, the yeah, <laughs> are any of the donuts in any of these places good? That's no. my question. No. Really? No, not They're really. Just not better than Dunkin' Donuts? Uh, like- we'll, we'll go to Koreatown. We'll go to California Donuts maybe after this. Is that good? I think it's okay. I think it's pretty good. California Donuts? Mm-hmm. I think oh, it's yeah, good. better than Krispy Kreme, for instance. Do you remember the California Raisins? Yeah, I used to love them. Do you remember the California Raisins? They were the best. I know my mother loved them. What was the deal with the California Raisins? They were claymation raisins, anthropomorphic raisins that would, uh, they were part of uh, some kind of. I guess Motown band that would uh, they would sing like sing <laughs> from the grapevine. Yeah, this kid, by the way, this kid's very racist, and we have nothing to do with it. No, it was just we was, had no, we did not make raisins black people. I but mean, look, uh, is that what it is? I don't know that they were fine. California raisins. I know. I, I look. If I watch it again now, it might you know seem more racist. Oh, I'm sure it's very I, but racist. But I'm just saying this. No one's brought it up in a while. But Motown was a, was a predominantly black uh, genre of music. Yeah, and, listen. Of course, I'm just saying I don't know why the raisins are black. I'm just saying it's almost like yeah. people were like, "Hey, maybe we should just hey." Oh, because they're black. I never like, thought hey, of it. But, you're right. but you like raisins, like yeah. that's what I feel like the executives, mm. like the people who were behind us, were like, "Hey, you like raisins, yeah. don't you? No, what if right. we stole black people's voices and talent and gave it to 
raisins that we created. Yeah, I think you're right. Actually. So we don't have to pay black people. <laughs> That's what I think it might have been. I don't know. I'm just guessing. By the way, all this diversity in Hollywood, black, I love that it's excluded black, like black people who are some of the most naturally talented people ever. Right. You know what I mean? But we we, we have to watch, uh, you know, romances. Uh, it's like, it's like I love that it just doesn't get to black people. It's like Muslims, uh, Asian people, uh, transgender Sri Lankans, but it will never be black. Like, it's like, that's how racist Hollywood is. They're like, just not black people. Anyone else, there'll be alien films. There'll be films with aliens in them before they fucking give black. It's just how racist Hollywood really is. They really just. It's insanely yeah, racist. It's gross. And they're like, they're like, yeah, we'll give you a little, uh, you get, here's a little, uh, a little uh, Aquafina, a little Rami Yusuf, and that's it. <laughs> And and they'll they'll do shows and have a sassy black friend who will come in and be like, you know, you look good, <laughs> and that'll be it. Instead, you know, which it's it's just wild that that particular discrimination doesn't seem to end. Yeah, I mean, you, you get the occasion, you know, and people will chime in. Like, what about the uh, you know Atlanta? What about you know the Wire? And uh, yeah, and, and you get them they're great, and, and they're them. all great. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like they're great. Yeah. It's like a lot of times when black people do think it's actually really good, and there used to be a lot more. Right. Uh, but then we went in the last few years, they found unfunny black people, which is almost impossible. Right. Like Hollywood's went and found just unfunny black people. It's like, I don't even know how you found unfunny black women. <laughs> They've been through more than anyone else in the country and they're genuinely hilarious and they're and they're tough and they're gritty in the sense that they've been through shit which is where humor comes from real yeah. humor and how you've like found unfun it's like wild there's a level of like you know it's it, it plays into so many racist stereotypes and it's gotta like, make everything's gotta make white people feel comfortable exactly yeah. everything's gotta be cuddly it's gotta right. be cuddly for white people you know it's like they'll make a movie they'll make a movie where It'll be it'll be about like the Civil War, and it'll be about like Robert E. Lee's wife having like second thoughts because she met a black person, and the whole movie will be a hero arc about Robert E. Lee's wife, you know, and, well, and that, she'll be like, "I really changed my thoughts." Well, that piece of I still love Robert, but I, I realize now, and they'll be like, "What a it's a beautiful film." That piece of shit that won the Academy Award, the Green Book. Year. Yeah, and it's like you. Wa I watched some of it, and it's like Vito Morgison explaining fried chicken to like <laughs> uh, his name, Marky. Yeah, let me look it up. And it's just like you ever had fried chicken? And he's like, I don't eat. It. Like, look, I, is this based on a true story? Because like the idea that it would be some kind of racist stereotype that he had tr ate some fried chicken in his life. No, this man's educated and talented, so he's never had fried chicken. Like, it's some crime for some guy who's a, like a I think he was a penis in that movie, yeah, some yeah, famous yeah. penis. It's like, no, he wouldn't have eaten fried chicken. Like, what, what are you doing? What even is this? It's crazy. But I just love that that's the version. It's yeah. just like, it's the white savior. Yeah, exactly. You know, a movie about one of the most heroic women in history, Robert E. Lee's wife. <laughs> She learns about racism from, like, you know, she has, like, a chance encounter, you know? Robert Lee's wife's like, I understand that Robert was fighting for the world he knew. Well, I have to fight for the new world. <laughs> da, na, na. <laughs> the whole climax here going, are you sure you want to do this, Robert? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Just checking. <laughs> All right, Robert. Well, I understand that the world is complex. <laughs> and then, you know, like Charlize Theron will play the black friend, you know? <laughs> 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 Charlize Theron will be like, be like, be like hey, bitch. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she'll be using like, like 20th century like verbiage yeah. in the thing. Yeah. Yes, queen. Yeah. Should be like, you changing your, you really changing your views and I'm here for it. <laughs> I am here for it. They'd be like, great job. Charlize is South African. And I'm not one of these people that thinks that like, you know, I'm not one of these people that's like, oh, wait, it's an Asian thing. It always has to be in it. Like, but I just think it is kind of, like to me, there was nothing fun. Somebody said that they were going to have Julia Roberts play Harriet Tubman. There's nothing <laughs> like years ago they thought. There, there, they, was nothing, really, they was really going to try to do that? There's nothing funnier than, than, than that conversation because you knew it happened. Right. You knew in somewhere in the 90s that conversation happened where an executive was like, we're going to give it to the biggest star in the country, Julia Roberts. I don't care who it's about. Right. 
Did you see, and I'm not a cultural appropriation guy at all. I don't give a fuck. It's whatever. But did you see, sometimes it's so funny. They gave white models on a runway show dreads and blonde dreads and black dreads, and it looks so wildly inappropriate. Well, they all look like they were guys from the, like, from, uh, the yeah, Florida were, Project. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's like they were wearing these like Egyptian headdresses with like yeah. dreads, and it's just so funny to me. By the way, people in fashion are all insane. Oh, God. They're all insane. So it's just funny when they, they parade that insanity on a runway, and then you just look at it and you go... Not only is it unappealing visually, it's just insane in this climate. It's I mean, just, you, you, we, for years now, it's been like they're so far behind the curve. Right. They're, like last year, like they had that thing with Johnny Depp where he was basically doing like it was some kind of Native American shit, but he was like, it was some perfume for like uh, who, Chanel or whatever, but yeah. like it was the Native American experience, but as told by Johnny Depp. <laughs> Who, the guy who played Tonto in the Lone Ranger. Yeah. Nobody knows Native Americans better than Johnny Depp. Yeah. It's just so funny to me that there's people that are, I mean, it is like Gucci will do something every now and then. They'll be like, you know, Gucci will be like, Gucci prison. And they'll have like, you know, orange outfits. It's like Gucci jumper. By the way, they, they will start closing down prisons and then they'll turn them into theme resorts where white chicks will take selfies <laughs> and they'll be like, heading to brunch in the execution room. Like, and they'll Will just they already do that in Alcatraz? I'm, I'm sure they do, but it'll be like resorts where they'll stay, <laughs> like they'll stay and the cell door will slam <laughs> and they'll be like, it's time for mimosas. You know, I'll see you on the yard, bitch. <laughs> they're going to be on the yard. Like, it's going to happen. It's just what's going to happen. Can't do anything about it. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Closing thoughts, Raymond. Uh, yeah. This is, again, I want to explain this to everybody because I know that we're going to get a lot of comments that you don't like the studio or, or you don't, or you think that there's lots of things that are not up yet. It's an evolving thing. I mean, the life, the back life, for instance, needs to be up higher a little bit. Like, you don't think we know technically, Help us if you want. If you have something no, to no, say. No, 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 no. Hold it. First of all, shut your mouth. Help us. We just said to them to all shut the fuck up. And now, and now you're trying to help. Dude, none of these people are going to help us Good in point. any fucking yeah. positive way. Is not help watching. us. Hey, don't. Help us. What we're saying is the lighting's going to get better. We're going to put stuff up here. It's going to look cool. We're playing around with things. Right. This is a, a process. It's not something that happens overnight. This will take a little bit of time to get it exactly where we want it. And, you know, if you want it to happen quicker, stop listening to the other podcasts. Start listening to mine. Start subscribing to the Patreon. Start doing all these things so that we can get higher numbers, so that we can get fucking a nice chunk of money, so that we can get a big, beautiful studio like everybody else. And and this is beautiful. I mean, it is going to be very nice. We're trying something a little different here. We want it to be a little dark. We don't want the, you know, traditional studio. We right. want something different. You got to break a few omelets to make an egg. That's not at all it. <laughs> That's not. You got to break a few omelets to make an egg. You know, listen to me. Listen to me. You got to break a few heads to make an egg. <laughs> That's what my father used to say. Break your head and you get an omelet sometimes. Uh, where can they find you? You're on the Patreon a lot. People are like, oh, Ray is not on the show. Ray lives in New York. I live in California. Ray's on the Patreon a lot. I always try to get around the Patreon. Um, because it's a great show with you on. I, you. I love doing the show solo too. I'm going to broadcast and podcast more. There's always room for you to be on the show. There's going to be enough podcasting for me to do solo. Some people love when you're on. Some people love when I'm just yelling by myself. There's ample. There's a, Look, the ones where you're alone, great. They're all here. There's yeah. enough of everything. Right. There's really enough of everything for you to enjoy something. You fucking... Never enough for you look, fucking people. This, is, this this might be a transition time. In two years, you might look back. We have a whole podcast network. I'm living in L.A. We don't know. Yes. Right about the time podcasting ends in two years, <laughs> we'll have a network. But, don't uh, worry, folks. <laughs> and then we're all going to get on MySpace because it is a bubble and it's all crashing down. Okay. Know this, folks. Most podcasters that are enjoying success right now will die horribly. If history is any indication of what happens, it's just what's going to happen. Right. It doesn't mean that I'm happy about it. So you can follow me at Ray Kump. 
<laughs> Instagram and Twitter. Uh, the Cump Podcast is relaunching. And here's another thing: yeah. most people don't know this. You are you are fighting Brendan Schaub. This is a huge thing. Yeah. It's just been announced. Ray and Brendan Schaub are fighting because now he was a professional fighter, but you right. used to run what five miles a day? I used to run five miles a day. I uh, I'm willing to bite. I'm not sure if he's used to biting people when he fights. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, everyone, what is your strategy? Because he could kill all three of us yeah. easily. So he walks into the room right now. He's going to fight you. What is your strategy? The strategy, if I had to, and I'm not look, I'm not looking to pick a fight. But if I had, if, I, if he's going, if he's going to push me to the limit. Uh, yeah, no. I like that you're ready on war footing. Yeah. If he's going to push you to the limit, uh, you know, I'm going to wrap him up as much as I can. Now, okay. explain what that is to well, everyone. Wrap him up. You're going to wrap him up. Now I'm, I'm going to try get in close. Look, I'm not going to do anything striking. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to out punch the guy. That, the, right. Interesting. So thanks I mean, for clarifying. The only shot I have is to kind of use my body weight against him as much as I can. He's not used to fighting guys my weight. Uh, right. No one is. Uh, right. Maybe guys in the prison. Um, is it possible that he punches you and loses his hand in you? Yeah. Look, he might not be used to. I, I'm insulated more than some of the. Like, like if he punched you <laughs> and he went like elbow length inside of you, right. could you then kind of just like go? Arr. Yeah, and I'm gonna dig at his eyes. I'm gonna you know bite bite his mouth. I'm just gonna fucking. You're gonna bite his mouth. Yeah. It's soft. <laughs> So anyway, get right, tickets for that. Uh, <coughs> our love is disgusting. End Cump. Uh, Cump is kind of doing a little bit of a soft relaunch this week. We're gonna come back with more more regular episodes and uh, transition to you know twice a week probably and do a little pa more Patreon stuff. So right. revisit Cump. Revisit our love is disgusting. I do with Lucy Steiner. You know she's hilarious. It's a great podcast. And uh, yeah, at Ray Cump on Twitter, Instagram. Tim J Dylan D I L L O N. <laughs> Tim J. Dillon, D-I-L-L-O-N, on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I'm a launching a tour, and it's going to be maybe not launched by the time this episode comes out. If you fucking heard it here, you heard it here first. It might be launched. I'm not announcing the name yet, but we're launching a tour. We're going to be in like well over 30 markets in 2020 um, in terms of weekends. Tickets are going to be available on timdillacomedy.com. Really excited about that. Patreon, The Tim Dillon Show. You get an extra episode every week for $5. For $20, you get uh, an extra episode every week plus an extra episode monthly. Um, we're doing video now in the studio uh, four times a month every week. This is going to be... Uh, a, 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 we're going to be committed to that. It's going to be an entirely different experience visually. We're going to really work on this. Um... We're going we're gonna to cover the tables. I mean, again, this is real rough stuff. It's real fucking DIY. You're, you're getting it here. You're, you're in on the basement level, and the elevator is only going up to paddock suite. <laughs> you see what I mean, kids? So, I, I mean, this is really where it's at. Uh, so, grab tickets. I will be at Zany's in Chicago from the 5th through the 8th. Just announced Charlotte, North Carolina. This comes out Sunday. I've already done the well. No, it comes out this Sunday. So if you're in fucking Charlotte, North Carolina, or you know someone who is, I'm going to the Comedy Zone in Charlotte. I love that club. I'm going to be there January 29th, 30th, 31st. I'm heading to New York City to do uh, my favorite fucking uh, Super Bowl party. Sal Volcano and Practical Joker does an amazing Super Bowl party. And then I go to Zany's in Chicago from the 5th through the 8th. I'm at Zany's in Chicago. Grab tickets for that. Then I am at the Grand Girard Theater in Toronto. Valentine's Day, the 12th, 13th, 14th in Toronto. Fucking amazing. There's many more dates. A whole tour is coming. We're really excited about it. I've got a new hour of material. We're getting ready. We're going we're gonna to really get it out there for the next six months, then maybe shoot it, put out a special or whatever, and, uh, you know, whatever. Catch me on Spade Show. That's a funny show that I enjoy doing. Um, but subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Tim Dillon Show. Uh, subscribe, rate the podcast five stars. Give us a positive review on Apple Podcasts. Listen on Spotify if you want. Get our numbers up on Spotify if that's where you get your podcast. Listen to The Tim Dillon Show on Spotify, Google Podcasts, whatever. We are everywhere, okay? You should be too. Um, closing thoughts. It's Yes. It's all coming, it it's all coming there apart. It is. It's all coming Don't apart. Don't ruin it. You got it. When you went, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> just leave it at that. Just leave it at that. Don't try to don't try to follow what was just brilliant. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. And listen, let me endorse because I want to help people too. Let me give my presidential endorsement. And my presidential endorsement is for Dick Cheney. <laughs> so I will, I think Cheney is the only guy right now that has the gravitas. Don't you love when they used to describe politicians like that? They'd be like, well, he has gravitas. Right. You know, which means he, he will murder people. Nixon had a lot of gravitas. That's what gravitas means. Gravitas means he will uh, chew on a pork chop while <laughs> while countries are getting carpet bombed. Gravitas. That's a guy with gravitas. Hank Kinster had a lot of gravitas. He has gravitas. He doesn't let a genocide upset his meal. <laughs> He's got gravitas. Why don't you get some gravitas? And also, and this is not a joke, and we, just very quickly, we are releasing a line of... Jewelry, exclusive jewelry by podcaster Tim Dillon. Um, you know that I've been passionate. You know one thing about me is I've always been passionate about jewelry. Oh, yeah. No, you, you, watches, rings. I love jewelry. It's something that I've loved my entire life. And my Growing up with my parents and my mother loved jewelry and my father loved jewelry. And there was something special about, there's something special about having a nice rock. Sure. People also know about me that I love creating opportunities for people. Right. You know that about me. You, you, you're a giver. I give. What I want to give people is an opportunity to share my love of jewelry with strangers. Yes. For a profit. Because I want to create a pathway to a better life using something that I love. Talk about a time in your life where my love of jewelry has helped you. I remember... Um where I, I had thought I had testicular cancer at one point. Yes, that and, was a tough time. And um, I I gone to the urologist. I was waiting for my sonogram results back, and you were just calming me down, banging on a table with this beautiful topaz ring. Yes, and you were just banging and saying, "Can you shut the fuck up, you fat idiot?" Yeah. But, but the ring, it was a, it was it was a calming presence there and you're like you don't have ball cancer you fat fuck but like the tapping of the ring stop was doing it on the table I, you, <laughs> you described it enough stop yeah. touching the table right but what it was was a perfectly set stone right it was a perfectly set stone and what i've realized about jewelry is that it is the constant it is a thing that doesn't go away people die you know what i mean sure the earth will die but good jewelry a perfectly set stone will last forever. I'm asking people to go out into their communities door to door and knock on people's doors. And then when people open those doors, I want them to tell a story that you just told. Right. And I want them to say, would you like to see an exclusive opportunity from, from jewels? Well, this is what it's called jewels by podcaster, Tim Dillon. Right. That's rolls off the tongue. But a lot of people don't know how to create those opportunities. So we're having a sales seminar yeah. in the Arizona Marriott and it's going to be $7,300 and it's going to be three days. Success ain't free. Never is. And what it will, it will, it will teach strategies to not only, cause it's not only about selling the jewelry, it's about understanding the product, falling in love with the product and understanding why the product is needed. Right. This is going to be a real come to Jesus moment for a lot of you. Many of you don't, you don't know. Many people that leave the seminar, I left the seminar last year, they asked me to pay more. Right. They said, can I give you more money? And I said, no. The I said, of, don't do it. Give it to your children. And they cried. Many the of amount cried. of weeping I witnessed during that weekend. And, and, and we, not in desperation, but just like their lives were changed. They realized they could feed their families. They could get that boat. People were coming up to me after the seminar and saying, my life had literally no purpose. I mean, literally, I, I would sit at a stoplight and go, there is no reason I just don't drive into oncoming traffic and close my eyes until I started selling jewelry for you. Right. A woman asked me, feel this, feel my, she took my thumb and she put it on her wrist. Said, this is where I tried to slip my wrist right. before. Right. And I couldn't even do that. Right. But these are the scars. And now she's making upwards of a lot of a lot, tens of hundreds of dollars. Don't even tell them because it's it's you know what it is? It's not about the money. It's about the feeling you get when you've you've put the, the perfect jewel, right. the perfect stone with the perfect person. That feeling 
And yes, are people necessarily susceptible to this all the time? No, because it is a hard sell. Yeah. Because we were asking you to go door to door. We were asking you to go door to door because because there's a lot of federal government. There's a lot of state governments and local townships. They don't want you to succeed. They, they do not want you to succeed. And they do not they do not allow us to market effectively. <laughs> On the phone <laughs> because of because they are afraid. They are afraid. Break with the rats. All the quarries, they're all owned by the government. Listen, we don't need to get into this, but this is real. You, you know, look into it. All I'm saying is this. So I need we need so what needs to happen is you need to get gorilla out there and you need to you need to just be able to go door to door and and actually Catch people, I don't want to say off guard, but I want to surprise people. I don't want to scare them. Right. But here's what I will say. Is anything good in life, does it ever happen if you're not a little scared? You got to put the fear of Jesus in them. They need to know that that you got to create a sense of urgency because many people are just watching their lives go by. Right. And if you knock on their door with, with a perfect opportunity for them, yeah. it's much better. And because we are prevented from reaching them uh, on the phone and right now uh, in most states on the internet, and because we are unable to reach them that way, we're, we're, we're going old school because I love face-to-face. -face. Right. I like to sit down with someone Face to face. And you can, another thing is you have parties in your house. You bring your friends over. This is not a Ponzi scheme. Many people who've been threatened by our success have called it a Ponzi scheme. Uh, and, and whoever these people are. Ponzi, look, a lot of these things out there, they want you to buy the merch. We want you to sell. What sell is, hard. Here's the question. What does a Ponzi scheme even mean? What does it even mean? It doesn't mean anything. Vaporware. People are upset with us because we want to empower you. That's it. And Jules by Podcaster Tim Dillon enables you to become independent from government assistance, from the assistance of your family. You're going to be able to get that car, get that apartment, turn around. I've had people come to me years later and say, the catalyst for me to change my life, the catalyst was, was, in, was in Emerald, that you showed me in Flagstaff, Arizona at a Hilton. Right. Because they said, I looked at the jewel and I became, so listen, so the, again, I don't, we're not going to just belabor the point here. I'm just saying this is real. It's not a bit. It's not like a bit on the show. I want to help people. Right. You want to help people. You man enough to take it? Or woman enough. Or non-binary. We have a lot of non-binary people. Are you people. genderless enough to we have do what you need to do? Let me tell you right now. If I told you how many non-binary people were making millions of dollars selling my jewels, you'd lose your fucking mind. You'd lose your fucking mind. Okay? So Jewels by Podcast with Tim Dillon. We're setting up an exclusive website. We are going to set this up, and we are going to do a seminar. I really want to do a seminar. I think we could really In change In Arizona. I lives. genuinely want to do a seminar. See who comes. Come to, to come to it. It's got to be in a hotel in Arizona, and I want to do a seminar. And we want to talk about because the jewelry business has changed. It's like anything else. Yeah. What are some of the large changes you've seen in the jewelry business? Uh, this, look, there's a lot of these chain stores <laughs> <laughs> that are coming in, and these certificates of authenticity are really. They were kind of poisoning the well. <laughs> they're, miss <laughs> they're missing the point. This, where did it come from? Right. It's conflict miss free. Yeah. What does that even mean? It's missing the point. Everything in life is conflict. What is the stone? Where is it? Who's <laughs> it? We're getting ahead of ourselves. Are you happy? <laughs> does it make you happy? What do you see when you look at that? <laughs> The sparkle? It's sparkling. You gonna tell me it doesn't sparkle? Ma'am, ma'am, look. Look Let at your finger. You right look now. at your finger. Do you know some of the unhappy this is some of the people that I know that live in misery? <laughs> you know what they do? They ask. They did you know what they spend their whole life doing? Asking questions. <laughs> they ask questions. They just go, what, why, who, where, who, what, why, where? It's like enough. Just let so 
So that's an important change now is that we're facing a lot of things in the marketplace. And one of them is consumers that are demanding unreasonable things from us. It's the classic case of you go to a doctor and you're, and you're going WebMD and you're t trying to diagnose yourself. Right. Yes. You're yes. Not, yeah. You think you know. You don't know. We've, we've spent years doing it. Decades. People want authority. Yeah. People want authority figures. People want people to speak with authority. And people want people to take their hand and say, you close your eyes and I walk you through. Right. I walk you through. You don't need to. I, I, people like to, remember that quote when there was one foot uh, set of footprints in the sand? It's because Jesus carried you. Right. Let us carry you. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. We'll and close let, them for you. Let Jules, <laughs> let Jules, start selling Jules by podcaster Tim Dillon. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. So timdillacomedy.com, which is, again, I'm a comedian as a side business, but I've done a lot of great things for a lot of people. I'm not ashamed of it. I used to be ashamed right. that I helped so many people. Isn't that wild? Isn't it crazy to be ashamed of helping others? You know why I was ashamed? Because I thought I would go, am I God? Right. And that because I'd helped so many people, I thought I was God. And that's why I was ashamed because, of course, I'm not, I'm not technically God. Right. What is God? Correct. But the amount of people I'd helped, it was starting to get, it was getting tricky. Right. Because it was like, I'm not a human being. Like, I've done, I've brought so much love into the lives of people. You know what I mean? I've never seen the footprint, the impact yes. of one man touch so many bank accounts. Yes. And we, we demonize money now. Bernie Sanders. Right. And uh, the other one, Bernie uh, Sanders wants you to be poor so he can help you. And the other one, uh, it's a gimmick, you know, Acacio Cortez, right? Whose grandfather was was Hernan Cortez, the explorer who discovered chocolate, and they're multimillionaires. The grand few you know, generations, you know, Cortez. He was didn't he? Wasn't he a Mayan explorer? Who yeah, no, I, think, I think he was a little older than the seven, six hundred. My point is that she's from a Mayan family that sacrificed children on a hit. On a, on he the, wasn't Mayan. <laughs> who was he then? He was Spanish. For Portuguese, maybe. My point is this, okay? Who is she to take your money? Who is she? she look, she's going to take it, and she's just going to... We're going to multiply your Here's money. Here's what she doesn't want you to be. She doesn't want you to be educated, and she doesn't want you to have your own thriving door-to-door -door jewelry business. She thinks you're a slob that she needs to She feed. thinks that you can't put a watch on someone and change their fucking life. Take their wrist. Take it. You know, and that when, cause you, you weren't a great salesman when I first hired you, what changed, what made you, because then you started really closing deals. And I think it right. was because now correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was because early on you didn't submit to the program immediately. Right. You were a little skeptical, like many people that are yeah. listening to this right now, they're skeptical, but then eventually I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you basically started, started really applying the rules. Mm -hmm. And doing and doing the work is this right. true? No, I, I would second guess you. I would I would say why would this work? I wouldn't be willing to go to the links you wanted me to go to. Right. Um. I would take no for an answer. I would uh, you know, not use my presence and my physicality as a tool, which is important. Right. Because a lot of people need to feel that this is an important moment in their life. If your life is not in danger, how are you going to use... When you stand in someone's doorway, let's just say it this way. When you stand in someone's doorway, they need to know you're there. <laughs> and when you say to them, I have a unique opportunity from podcaster Tim Dillon, people go, I can't afford jewelry. You go, listen, that's a common misconception. Mm. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down with you in your living room at your kitchen table. We're going to drink a cup of coffee. I don't mind if it's not the fancy stuff. That's a good line I use. I go, yeah. I don't mind if it's not the fancy stuff. Sank is fine for me. And then if they don't have coffee, I say, there's nothing wrong with water. And then in many of the places we sell this, there is a lot wrong with water. <laughs> and so you shouldn't have anything. But what I still do is I sit down at their kitchen table with them. And some, the last time I did this, a woman offered me cereal. She goes, I didn't have any milk. And we ate dry cereal together. Mm -hmm. And I still made her understand how how important it was for her that I walked out of there with a commitment. I made a woman cook me eggs once. Yeah. And uh, and she was happy to do it, probably. <laughs> I mean, I didn't make her, but right. you know, I, I, I insisted. Uh, and, and, and she understood that those 
two eggs, it, it really costs nothing. What, right. What's an egg? A cent each? Yeah. That that will open the window to a new life for her. Where, yeah. is, where is she now? Uh, right. She's passed. And that's, and but you know what? But she was doing well for a while. <laughs> and, and you know what? And I'm sure that her family's not scrambling to get funeral money. She said have a better life for her uh, family. Um, covered a lot of expenses. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, we have we have we have testimonials. We'll read on the next episode. Her this children is, are happy. This is what it is, folks. My name is Tim Dillon. I sell jewelry. I'm a podcaster, but that's not what excites me. What excites me is creating opportunities because I believe everyone in this country is an entrepreneur. My my cousin has Down syndrome, and most people think he would not be a good jewelry salesman. If I showed you the amount of jewels that he sold, you would be shocked. One of the smartest men I know. Well, because he's he's one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life, and he's he's go I'm going to make him a vice president, a partner of this. Guy. I don't know what the corporate structure is, but I'm going to put him. You're going to put put his name on the accounts, and he is. I mean. He's amazing, and we love him, and we love him, and we love. We He's love a little handsy him. sometimes, but that look. He does what he has to do. It's all love. Yeah. It's not coming from anything else but love. So if he touches you, he loves you. Right. And I, I'm Stop not complaining. I'm not afraid of love, and I think a lot of you people are afraid of money. I'm not afraid of money. I'm not afraid of helping. Okay. So thank you, everybody, and good luck out there. We'll have details about the seminar, and you know, like I said. At the end of the day, and this is really the quote that I've that I've really lived my whole life by. At the end of the day, stop asking questions. No, it's the end of the day. That's the that's the end of the quote. So why, why are you gesturing to me? No, I was just saying that's it. You were looking at me like there was something else coming. The no. quote is at the end of the day. No, I was I was content. The, at the end of the day. That's what you tell people at the end of the day. Do you understand what I'm saying? 100%. You look like I, I live the message. Live the message. All right. The end of the day. The end of the day. The end of the day. Live the message at the end of the day. Good night.